Happy Monday. It's the Zone Boxing Show. I go by the name of Vak. And I'm Barack the Boxing Bully. And I don't know what it is, Barack. I'm feeling great this morning. I'm so glad that these folks are joining us. So much to talk about. I know why you're feeling great, because <laughs> boxing was phenomenal this weekend. Every single fight, incredible card on the zone. I think that that has something to do with it. Also, uh, I had a good breakfast, good coffee early in the morning, so I'm kind of hyped and charged. Uh, I used to be hyped and charged back in the day, so I'm thinking I'm getting I'm getting that in 2023. Look, we saw history happen on Saturday night at MSG, so I want to kick it off right away with that. Uh, this particular fighter had already accomplished so much in the sport of boxing, had already won titles in seven different divisions, had already been considered the, the most, the hardest hitter in women's boxing. She's continually, um, I guess, breaking barriers. I'm talking about Amanda Serrano, Barack. She became the first ever Puerto Rican undisputed champion on Saturday night. I mean, let's give her a round of applause, man. Amanda did it. Um, 100%. And not only that, obviously Alicia Baum going as well. We're going to touch on that in a few here on the opening bell. Uh, Barack, you know, I, I'm, I'm reading a lot of things on Instagram with people saying that, oh, Amanda shouldn't have got hit that much. Why? She's been in so many wars. Why was she in the middle of the ring scrapping? I, To some degree, I, I understand and I, and I would agree that she could have made that fight a little easier. You know, she was the longer fighter, the more skilled fighter. But, you know, when you're fighting a person that's that awkward and throwing punches the way she did, you know, it's hard to look good against opponents like that. And maybe she could have done better. Maybe she'll watch the tape and say, hey, I didn't have to, you know, be in the middle of the ring that entire fight. But I wanted to put that to the side and just really give her flowers for getting the win and accomplishing what she set out to do. Unbelievable night, first of all, and unbelievable accomplishments. It's just sometimes in this particular sport, you got to do more than win. Like you got to win the way people want you to win. And that's what sucks in this sport. You know, any other sport, you just want your team or player to win. But in this sport, the participants, you got to win the way the crowd wants you. And that sucks. But it is what it is. She's the first Puerto Rican undisputed champion. Congratulations, Amanda. Great job, great career. And she wants to even look forward to an even tougher fight. I think styles make fights. I think it had nothing to do with Erica Cruz making her fight that fight. I think this is the fight that she chose to fight. Amanda chose to sit in there and fight most of the rounds. There were rounds where she came out. I'm sure Jordan was probably telling her to box. I wish I, I was watching the broadcast, but I was there live. And, and stay long, stay stay jabbing, and stay moving. Because whenever she did that, she was in total control of the fight. But I think it was her Puerto Rican bravado. I think it was the crowd. I think it was just that she wanted to get the girl out of there. And you're not gonna be able to knock everybody out. It was a very, very tough girl in Erica Cruz. Yeah. There was that one round where she heard her, she caught a flush, she, she dropped her. She just couldn't finish. Erica Cruz is a tough, tough woman. Yeah, and Barack, going into this fight, a lot of people assumed, you know, watching tape of Erica Cruz that Amanda would go in there and wash her, get her out of there. It's, it's not always like that. And she came there to fight the fight of her life, Erica Cruz. I mean, disciplined fighter. Uh, she's a, a police officer, some sort of chief police officer back in her country. Uh, she is the, the epitome of what guts are and I, I thought she she gave a great uh, value performance but just a man who's too strong too skilled and I do think technically Barack outside of and it's sad what you're saying is very true and you have to win a certain way and obviously she showed that she could box her but there's something that I saw as well I thought if she would have kept her at the right distance that left uppercut was there all night because Amanda was coming down with a head with these looping shots. And I know you mentioned that Erica didn't make her fight that way. I don't necessarily agree with that. I, I, I really feel her style was very awkward. And at times, even though Amanda was right in the pocket, shooting down the middle, great short shots, Amanda's head being down and her, her it's like her arms are coming after her body. I, I think at times she pulled Amanda into her fight. But nevertheless, look, great performance. I think that was just a choice. I think that was a choice by Amanda. 
Um, it's not like she had her up against, it's not like Erica had Amanda up against the ropes. They were in the center of the ring banging because Amanda's usually able to hurt her opponents and she was able to hurt Erica. So, yeah, definitely. And she was digging to the body a lot. So it's not like if you're oh, digging to the body, your opponent didn't make you do that. That means uh, you're not scared of getting hurt. Um, a lot of Erica's punches were arm punches, head down, just throwing punches. Yeah. Hardly any technique at all. And I don't think Amanda was worried about it, but she's not worried about getting hurt, but you can lose rounds that way. And you can look like you're losing the fight when, when the person's even more active than you. Usually nobody out punches Amanda Serrano. Yeah, I mean, and I do, I'm glad you brought up the body attack. Body attack was vicious, but she does that against every opponent. She's always attacking body. I'm surprised she wasn't able to slow uh, Cruz down. That's why I say so tough, because even with that body, vicious body attack, Cruz still still kept coming. Um, but look, moving on to the next, which is what people was expecting, right? In attendance, Katie Taylor, ringside, walked into the ring. And, and you know, we were we were debating that before the fight. Is she going to get into the ring? We, we didn't get any type of animosity. These girls did face off, but they were smiling eventually, holding their belts. Uh, we all know we were going to get this. It's going to happen in Dublin, Ireland on May 20th, Barack. Uh, there's a little controversy behind that. The Irish people wanted to be in Pro Park still. They want 60,000 in attendance. Even Conor McGregor threw his hat in there. Hey, I'll pay for extra security. Uh, this fight needs to happen uh, yeah, in front of 60,000. That's, that's money issues. Yeah, no, um, I know. Well, you know, well, he, it, it's not... Nobody, Eddie Hearn, nobody at Matchroom, nobody at the zone is saying that it might be in Croke Park. They're saying it's going to be in Dublin and uh, in an arena that doesn't hold nowhere near what Croke Park does. What I'm saying is I'm going on a limb and saying that the venue might change eventually before May 20th. Yeah, I definitely hope so. Listen, I've never felt like I felt maybe one time. One time, you talk about when you foreshadow a fight, when you announce a fight, because yeah, there, there was a little argument between me and you concerning whether Katie should get in the ring. And at the end of that argument, I felt that you and Eddie was right. I felt like, yes, you can you can announce the fight that way. That makes sense. That can store, stir up some excitement and it, and it is what it is. Now, I wasn't expecting no animosity in the ring. I wasn't expecting anybody going back and forth at all. Even the stuff Eddie said that Katie should say, I knew she wasn't gonna say, you know? Yeah. But when you talk about um, foreshadowing a fight, when you talk about announcing a fight, I think it lived up to like the first time when Canelo sat in that ring and said, Triple G, you are next, my friend. Mm -hmm. That right there. And then Triple G came out in the ring, his music came on. It was yeah. unbelievable. I got goosebumps. Everybody wanted to see Canelo versus Triple G before their first fight. It was incredible. And I felt like, this gave me that same feeling, not as dramatic, but right. that same feeling of a fight that we really, really, really wanted to see. It, we know it's going to happen. And they came out with the date too, May 20th, the night of. Yeah. Right. You, you that, can't, that you can't you beat can't get... women's boxing right now. You just no, no, can't no, no, beat no. women's boxing. I feel like eventually when a lot of women start making millions of dollars, maybe there might be issues <laughs> like in the men's in men's boxing. But as, as of right now, women's boxing is winning. And Barack, I couldn't agree with you more, which leads me to discuss the co-main event in Alicia Baumgartner, who has become a star in the sport of boxing, uh, who also becomes undisputed. And, and oh my God, in, in a tough fight that she was in, there, there was times that it, it appeared that she might have gotten tired, maybe gassed out a little bit, but her skills prevailed and her power prevailed. I mean, that young lady can punch, obviously, uh, with a lead right hand, uh, dropping her opponent, you know, Barack, I love to see that style of fighting in women's boxing. I, I love how Alicia is, is holding women's boxing up high in, in terms of excitement. And so is Amanda, you know, oftentimes, at least in the, in the recent past, people have said things that, oh, women don't bring excitement to the sport because they're not knocking people out or they don't see blood and, and so on and so forth. And, you know, throughout the years, I've seen fights like that. Maybe they weren't getting highlighted. But la uh, Saturday night, those those women that bring that to the sport, they were highlighted on a grand scale on the zone. They were uh, everything that you want in the sport, the women were giving it. Power, skill, 
toughness uh, in the middle of the ring. Uh, and then Alicia brought that on Saturday night. Um, Barack, she just... It seems like almost yesterday she became a champion when went to London as an underdog, won by knockout. And, and what happened since then, I mean, she's continuing, uh, continuously uh, not proving doubters wrong because she's already arrived. People know she, she has the skills, but I guess proving it to herself. And she's undisputed. Women's boxing is on fire right now, no question about it, Barack. Uh, and uh, so I echo what you're saying. Um, let, let, let's let's stop the nonsense about they don't bring excitement to the sport. They proved that they bring as much as much as excitement ex, excitement as men in a sport. Absolutely. I want to ask you a question. I, how many times did you stand up during Alicia's fight? Oh man, so many times. Both fights. Exactly. McHallick is just like Erica Cruz, a, a really really tough fighter. More, probably way more skillful than Erica Cruz. So that's why this fight was just competitive at that high level. But it was incredible. She she got knocked down twice in the second round, still got up, still was trying to win this fight. Not once did she concede and just say, okay, I can't take it anymore. Uh, I, I saw a lot from Alicia that night. Um, I think she has a brilliant corner. I think she showed that she can box. I think she showed that she wanted to bang in there. There were some rounds in there where she was hitting McHeaded like, like, like a heavy bag. <laughs> like she <laughs> was, was digging every body shot, digging every head shot. I'm like- I think that was the last round uh, right in the middle of the ring. Oh, uh, she incredible. was throwing shots with bad intentions, man. And yeah, so I, she, I had, she, had the whole crowd. she had the whole crowd standing up. This was boxing at its finest and it just happened to be women. And Michaela, Michaela was in the crowd. She was, <laughs> she was right there. I love the energy. It, it doesn't get no better than this. I tell you what makes errors great is rivalries. Floyd Mayweather's era, it, it gets talked about because Floyd was just so dominant. But when you have women like Katie Taylor and Amanda Serrano and the fights are very close, Floyd didn't really have anybody like that. The fights were really so close. It, it just makes the error so much great. And that's why I say women's boxing is on fire. Listen, Brock, Clarissa Shields is in the building. I mean, there were so many people with, with star-studded events, of course. Stevenson's uh, was in the building. four undisputed women in the building that <laughs> night. <laughs> yeah, uh, uh, obviously, Katie Taylor. I, I, I want to I put the, I want to read this tweet. And the uh, franchise proves deserved. Oh my God. I, I want to read, I want to, uh, well, I mean, at the end of the night, did we have, Five, um, five undisputed champions when it was all said and done, right? With uh, with Alicia, uh, Serrano, Taylor, Clarissa, and Cruz. Uh, so, so this and is really. I mean, Clarissa just let go of the 154. She was undisputed at 154. So you're talking right. about from 126 all the way up to 168. Well, here's what Clarissa Shields tweeted out. She said, just to stir the pop, women's boxing has a smaller pool of women. Sure, I'm agreeing to disagree, but at least we not, we're not scared to fight each other. The men have... <laughs> so she's throwing shots at the men. And everybody <laughs> in, the, in the whole boxing community. But but she made a point. <laughs> she, she made a great she, point. She made a valid. She so, made a valid point. So look, she's kind of sick of people saying that. No, look. I mean, women women's boxing is thriving right now. I just want to touch on uh, Richardson Hitchens, who for a long period of time was on Mayweather promotions and was kind of a, a hidden gem to some degree that he wasn't busy, wasn't fighting. Uh, you know, he's sparred with the best of them. Uh, he's held his own. There, there's rumors about how he, I mean, he worked a lot of these fighters today that we call champions and he wasn't getting his shot. He wasn't getting his opportunity. And I do believe that Saturday night, it was somewhat of a come out fight for Richardson Hitchens because he was fighting an undefeated John Bowser, who, who was a, uh, you know, who was a decorated amateur to some degree, who was a hard, you know, uh, a softball skilled, crafty. He was with top rank for a while, and maybe not at the level as, as Richardson, but the way he dominated the fight, the way he was able to put him down with that straight right hand, he he made a statement. He put 140 pounds. Uh, weight division on notice on Saturday night. I saw Eddie Hearn ringside looking, watching like, man, I, I got one here. I got a special fighter here with Matchroom. And uh, I'm excited as to what uh, as to what to come for uh, Richardson Hitchens. Yeah, I guess it's Richardson Hitchens 
coming out fight should have been Mendez uh, years back because that's a, you know, former champion and, and he dis dismantled him. But it just so happens that, you know, he didn't pick up popularity, wasn't fighting enough. He got with Matchroom and now we see a total difference. And I kind of thought his coming out fight was re really happened in, in Cleveland, Ohio, because he was in enemy territory. And I wanted to see how he performed. I wanted to see how he handled being in a, in a crowd that didn't like him because of his beef with Montana Love, but he performed well, got the stoppage. That was incredible to me. Now you're talking about Saturday night. You're talking about a guy that, let me just give you a BBQ. MSG, I, and if I'm not let, mistaken, he's never even fought at MSG before. Right, no, let, let me give you a BBQ. Uh, that's a, a, a boxing bully quote. Sometimes oh, you have to stuff. pay. <laughs> there you go. Sometimes you have to pay for what you say. And and that's exactly what Bowser had to do. Now, I love the press conference. A lot of times I don't like when, when guys are going back and forth disrespectfully, but it was so real. It was so, uh, e both of them really believed what they were saying. At least you had to think that Bowser believed what he was saying because it just seemed so genuine. And he was saying, he even said, Hey, listen, when, when Eddie asked him, you know, his question, Richardson Hitchens, um, question power might be in question, but what do you think about it? Because you sparred him so many times. And Shadeja Green was sitting right next to Hitchens, and he said, well, I sparred her, and she hits harder than him. And Richardson was, and, and Richards, Richardson was like, well, you're going to walk into some ish. And that's exactly what happened. He walked into something every single round. I may, It might have taken Richardson two rounds to figure out the distance. And he took over the rest of that, maybe just one round. And he took over the rest of that fight. His power was there. His accuracy was there. And it, and it just looked like after a while, Bowser got frustrated, was doing a little dirty tactics. You do what you got to do in there. Let the ref sort that out. So it's, it's safe to say Sean Bowser, you know, as Floyd used to say, his mouth was oh, writing a check oh. that his butt can't cash. I thought but he was going to call him a tough competitor. No, <laughs> no, but I, I will say this. I, I thought that that fight should have been stopped. Oh, I yes. Thought, I thought that John Bowser's corner um, went a little too far in allowing him to try to compete. He was not competing in there. The fight was one-sided. He was getting hit with shots, flush, clean, um, no defense. And I, I feel yeah. like the corner should have stepped in and saved the tough fighter from himself. I, I agree. I agree. Uh, you know, yeah. sometimes you don't know how bad a fighter's hurt now. There were there were a few instances in there where maybe he got caught with a jab and then he would pause for a second as if he had like a broken or over the bone. We've seen guys that have um, received that and they can't continue, but he, he was just a tough guy. So we don't really know how bad he was, but there was just a couple of moments where he froze and then Hitchens would just unload so many shots in the middle of the ring. And I'm like, I'm begging the ref to just jump in between. No, no, we, just we, we literally take it were yelling. You don't have to go down to for the fight to have to be stopped. You don't have to be bleeding profusely. But he was just taking too many shots defense, defenselessly. And I just thought it should have been stopped as well. You know, you just mentioned yelling at the ref. We were literally up yeah. on our feet yelling at the ref if there's any footage out there be unprofessionally sitting, on sitting in yes. the media <laughs> section just so unprofessionally like stop the fight stop the fight what are you doing you know because we care about these fighters safety we know how brutal this sport is I mean we've seen you know being involved in the sport all these years like the uh, unfortunate things that have happened to fighters incredible night every opponent for the A side of the fight uh, was just great. It was just really, really tough guys. Like you said, um, Bowser had to be saved for himself, but they, they just, get to the corner just let him continue. But we cannot not mention Shadeja Green's performance. She is at 168 pounds. She is the only woman, well, not the only, but the only woman that's in Clarissa Shields' weight class area because she fights in three different weight divisions, who she says is a very, very, very skillful fighter. You know, they, they're not friends anymore. They used to be friends. I wish I can get them back together because whether they're friends or not, they're willing to go in there and fight each other. Shadeja Green reminded me of Ann Wolf. Now, I hate yeah. to say that because I do like for fighters to have their own identity. Shakur never liked when you said, oh, you're the next Floyd. No, I'm me. Mm -hmm. But that overhand right, there's a, there's a viral video of Ann Wolf getting a knockout with one punch for the overhand yeah. right. That overhand right was just so similar to Ann Wolf's. It got her a knockdown, not the knockout, but it also got her the stoppage. Great performance by Shadeja Green. That's gonna be somebody that the whole world better watch. And eventually, I'm, we're gonna probably see her fight a Clarissa Shield. All right, listen, uh, fight announcement before we get out of here. 
the the king of Great Britain, I like to call him at times. Mr. Anthony Joshua will be facing Jermaine oh, so Franklin. You wouldn't say that's that's Tyson Fury, huh? <laughs> wow. I know, I know Joshua no, the most Ty popular Tyson and probably beloved. But this guy got Tyson is the gypsy king, the gypsy king. Okay, so he's still a king, de definitely. But he's fighting uh, Anthony Joshua fighting Jermaine Franklin April first, uh, which is coming, crazy to me. Right, uh, it's crazy it, to me because, because it's not an easy fight. No, it's no, not a soul no. Touch like that, that's all. crazy to me. I, I'm saying like Eddie, oh, hold on, <laughs> Eddie. You said he wanted to fight one of the top fifteen guys. That, not to mention that he's not testing. The guy I thought you was gonna say, and that's just that's. That's Anthony Joshua's pedigree. He's just fighting good fighter after good fighter after great fighter. And, and there's no breaks. There's no freaking breaks for Anthony Joshua. And Barack, not to mention, he, he's training with a new trainer right now in uh, Derek um, James. Derek James, uh, the camp of Errol Spence and Charlo. So, I mean, that. that that has to be all panned out. You know, you have to see how you gel. Usually a, a, a fight like that, um, you don't jump into a big fight, but that's who Anthony Joshua is, and Eddie Hearn has always said that. So we're looking forward to that one. I mean, we this spring, uh, just this year, it, for that. yeah. I just see so many big fights happen in 2023 here on the zone. So I'm excited about that fight. All right, that's our show for today. Hope you guys enjoyed. Peace and love. Stay safe. We're out of here. Mauricio, pronto.